So I'm a church house. Welcome to the World Wealth Creation Conference in Singapore. Um, Tama is the editor of Crypto Capital. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, fabulous. Just given a fantastic speech, by the way, which I was lucky enough to catch part of. And uh, it's definitely fascinating stuff. And hopefully we'll get some insights in this uh, press conference while we're talking to Tama. So, Tama, tell me why you think uh, blockchain is going to revolutionize business over the coming years. Sure. I mean, in a nutshell, the main reason is if you look back to the 1990s tech boom, the tech boom was really about the democratization of information transfer, information exchange. What we're looking at now with blockchain is a democratization, a peer-to-peer -peer exchange of value. Um, and that's really never been able to, we've not been able to do that before. So it's not just exchanging currency, but exchanging uh, you know, interests in a particular business, uh, security, so on and so forth, in a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized way. Uh, and we've never been able to do that before. Wonderful. And uh, the, the, the terminology of blockchain technology, and everybody's going to be familiar with what this really means. It's, it's a word. But what is it? Is there a way of explaining it to the average person in the street? Sure. So, I mean, really a blockchain is in essence just a distributed ledger. And if you think of a simple database, typically you have a master database and then you have copies or slaves to that master database. What Bitcoin showed was that it was possible to have a decentralized, trustless ledger. So everyone has a copy of the database. Everybody agrees on how that database is updated, and that's how we get decentralized value exchange. So that's really kind of how it works in a nutshell. But you can obviously extrapolate that well beyond the proof of concept that Bitcoin has, has, has shown. Wonderful. And um, where is Bitcoin going? What is Bitcoin phase two? So, you know, the next stage of Bitcoin really is going to be driven by institutional money. Um, that's kind of been on the sidelines for a number of reasons. It's very difficult for, you know, large oil tanker-esque institutional uh, money managers to get into Bitcoin. Um, it is now becoming more institutionalized. We're seeing things like custody services. We're seeing things like, you know, compliance being built around and, and a more solid legal framework behind Bitcoin. Uh, so the things that have been holding back larger institutions from participating in Bitcoin, those barriers are being removed. Uh, and you know, Bitcoin is still you know, relatively small in terms of market cap, you know, a couple hundred billion dollars. You know, it's still far less than Apple has in terms of cash on its balance sheet. So, you know, we've got a long way to go, but it's going to be a bumpy ride. So that kind of answers parts of my question about the current surge in market capitalization and value of Bitcoin, which is currently hovering around about 10,000 US dollars per coin. You know, where do you think it's going and is it going to crash? Um, first of all, you know, there are going to be some major corrections. There already have been. Uh, you know, we've seen corrections of 30, 40 percent even this year. So it's in the past few months, actually. So, um, you know, this is one of the most volatile asset classes on earth. What I would say is that as an investor, I think you need to kind of differentiate. There's really Bitcoin and then there's everything else. Uh, and in the everything else basket, uh, you know, around 90 to 95 percent of those everything else uh, crypto assets, in my view, will likely be worth zero at one point. So we're going to see a huge shakeout, a big bloodletting. Uh, we're going to see a lot of volatility, but this is really all on the way to a, a much larger secular growth in terms of crypto assets and Bitcoin in particular. Fantastic. And, um, and if we look at the uh, top players in the cryptocurrency charts, um, we, we have the Bitcoin, the Big Cat, Bitcoin Cash, we have Ethereum, Neo, uh, Monero, currencies like this. But there's also other one which is up there, which is um, BitConnect. Now, looking into this, this looks like as, as, a, as a lay person looking at this, some form of lending platform to put back into it. Um, what are your opinions about this particular uh, currency? Um, it's funny you bring that up because literally over the past few weeks, I've had uh, subscribers to Crypto Capital ask me about BitConnect. Um, I have to be very careful in terms of calling it a Ponzi scheme. Um, what I will say is it really doesn't tick any of the boxes that I look at uh, when making recommendation for a crypto asset. 
Uh, it appears to me to be simply a um, mechanism for a multi-level marketing pyramid scheme. I mean, talk of 40% risk-free interest. Um, there's no white paper that I can find. It's extremely um, opaque in terms of how it all works. Uh, I'll just leave it well alone for the time being. It's like many cryptocurrencies. Maybe it's a case of buyer beware. You know, if you want to try it, be careful and don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Absolutely. I mean, I have friends of mine asking all the time, saying, look, have I missed the boat on Bitcoin? And frankly, they ask me that at 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, 8,000. Um, the thing I say is, look, make sure everything else is squared away first. Maybe own some real estate, have a good diversified portfolio of bonds, ETFs, some FX, and then take your one to maximum three to five percent of your investable portfolio and have a go with crypto assets. But you know, it needs to be done under the framework of understanding that this is extremely volatile. It's an asymmetric bet. I think you know the potential you know risk return is huge, but the risk is also you need to be prepared to write it down to zero and walk away and be okay with it. Absolutely, and there's also this other um, emergence of ICOs as well. Um, initial coin offerings as an alternative to securing startup money as an alternative to angel investors or uh, venture capital uh, and ICOs be tying them to the value of say Ethereum and we're seeing a lot of ICOs actually raising tens of millions of dollars really fast this way. What would you say um, to the average person thinking about investing as an angel investor but maybe going for ICOs? What should they be looking for? The vast majority of ICOs are simply piggybacking on the cryptocurrency hype. That's the vast majority of them. So I've looked at a lot of ICOs. They are um, predominantly way, way overvalued. Uh, you know, often there's really no genuine new innovative technology behind them. Uh, and the reason people launch them is because, you know, instead of having to scrounge around, go to angel investors, you know, with their PowerPoint presentation uh, and scrape together a couple hundred thousand, they can add a crypto token and apparently raise millions or tens of millions of dollars. So you're getting, you know, seed level idea projects, getting series C level funding. Um, that's a recipe for disaster. A lot of people are going to get burned. A lot of people have already been burnt. Uh, and I think, you know, next year we're going to see a big shakeout differentiation between projects with real use case, real validity, and those which have simply been riding the coattails of the likes of uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin. Fantastic. So what is the one thought you'd like to leave um, your audience with uh, in terms of what they should do? They, they have $10,000 lying around. They don't know what to do with it. They can afford to you know, maybe lose it, maybe can't give exact in investment advice, but would you say they should be considering an ICO or a cryptocurrency? Uh, first of all, I would not look at an ICO at all. I'd look at, you know, one of the established crypto assets with some track record, uh, you know, Bitcoin first. Bitcoin is really still your global reserve currency when it comes to digital assets. I'd say, you know, you've got to take a lot of time and get up the learning curve because there's no guardrails with with uh, with Bitcoin and crypto. Um, if you don't take the right kind of precautions, you can lose your, your assets very, very easily. Um, for the vast majority of people, I think the main thing is buy a little bit of Bitcoin, tuck it away and forget about it and come back in a couple of years time. It'll either be up tenfold or it'll be worth 20%. Um, so th that's, I think, the, the vast majority of people. Fantastic. Tama, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank not you. All, not at all. Been a pleasure.